Well, hello everyone, and thank you for uh, tuning into this video. Uh, what I wanted to do is spend a little time and provide a short overview on the ZT1000 tuner, uh, which uh, again is described in uh, the ARRL uh, articles, uh, hopefully, and um, just go over uh, some of the initial uh, features of the unit. And then later on in uh, following videos, we'll be going uh, deeper into the operation. Um, in fact, we'll just hook up a radio to it and see how the tuner operates. Okay, so what you can see here, uh, and pardon the, uh, you know, the reflection here on the screen, is the, is the tuner. Uh, I'll go over some of its sections with the analog meters here. Uh, a lot of the control buttons here we're going to go over. And even more importantly, uh, we'll just boot it up here so we can see the uh, the screen from the Raspberry Pi and then also a lot of the um, uh, encoders here uh, that are going to be used to control uh, our variable uh, uh, capacitors and inductor. And then we'll also be taking a look inside the tuner again in other, in other videos. Okay, so go on, uh, we're just going to go on ahead here and power the unit up so you can see how quickly it boots. And then I'll highlight some of these features while the unit is up. I, I place the power button of the tuner here in the front. And all we have to do is just flip it on. Uh, you can see that the analog meters here go through an initialization uh, procedure. And then you'll see here on the right that the Raspberry Pi uh, is booting up. It takes a little time, but I think it's pretty fast. Uh, I've also created a custom image here <laughs> for laughs and giggles. Obviously, the image here can be uh, changed to anything you want. Uh, and then relatively quickly, uh, you can see the tuner comes up um, in a very uh, fast uh, fashion. I think it takes uh, uh, less than a minute uh, for the unit uh, to boot. Uh, it should be mentioned that, uh, you know, as soon as you flip the power button, the tuner is really operational uh, because the Arduino Due uh, boots a lot faster than the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi in this case, it's really just meant for uh, displaying data uh, as it receives it from the Arduino Due and also uh, allowing us to communicate uh, with the tuner. Uh, the buttons here in the front are, um, you know, are enabled. This is uh, basically a touch screen interface. Okay, so I'll go over uh, some of the features and I will uh, actually also zoom in on the screen here so you can see also uh, how this works. Anyway, from the top here, as you can see, I have two analog meters. I have them labeled as forward power and reverse power. Uh, these are auto ranging and they are being controlled by the Arduino uh, through a PWM uh, uh, type of uh, uh, interface or function. Obviously, I can make these meters uh, have any sort of functionality I want. You know, should I not want forward power? Should I want to um, display SWR? We can do that. If you are familiar with Kenwood radios <laughs> with the 940S, you will see that these are actually uh, meters that I was able to get off eBay um, as replacement parts for uh, a Kenwood uh, 940S. I've been a Kenwood fan uh, for a very, very long time. I really like those radios. I really like the way that they sound. And I figured, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to incorporate uh, some uh, looks of uh, uh, those radios. And I found these meters and I figured it would be a good uh, way to incorporate them into my tuner. Right below that, uh, you will see that I have labeled a, a group of buttons that I called control. And basically, these are a power button. Uh, I have a S or special function button here uh, that allows me to map to a, to a lot of different things. You know, one, I can, I can use it for shutting things down. Uh, the other one, actually, uh, what I have mapped it to now is when I push this button down, uh, the tuner takes its settings. Uh, depending on what location your uh, inductors and capacitors are uh, at a given point and actually saves them into memory. Uh, you saw here when the tuner booted up, it automatically booted up in the previous parameter. So it remembers its state uh, when you power it off and then you power it back on. It's again right back to the state uh, that it started from. There's a home button here that allows us to, to home our stepper motors. In fact, if I push it, you will see right away that the inductor as well as the as the capacitors the, the inductor will go all the way back to the to the beginning it will initialize itself and all of them will basically get initialized to zero uh, this is a a state where the uh, capacitors are 
uh, fully unmeshed and the inductor uh, has minimum minimum inductance is basically is right back to the beginning and this is just sort of like an initialization type of thing obviously you know we can uh, bring the tuner back to where we need to with uh, you know with, uh, with the encoders we can also keep uh, increasing you know the inductor here depending on what we want you know obviously all these features because it's an automatic tuner um, uh, once you hit the transmit button uh, you know the tuner will basically read frequency and band and it will uh, bring uh, the inductors and capacitors to a location um, to achieve minimum SWR and then finally here I have an average and PEP button you know depending on where you're transmitting either should W or SSB um, you know it changes the labels here on the meter so you can read uh, both forward the reverse power uh, in a uh, uh, pip mode or uh, in an average uh, mode to allow you to get uh, better um, uh, readings from power the bottom here I have two other uh, sections so there's an antenna section and a radio section and this is just simply allowing you through the use of uh, external relays as described and, and external uh, switching boxes to uh, switch on a particular antenna or to switch on a particular radio. Now let's say for example we have no antenna uh, switched on you automatically get an alert on the tuner here uh, you know don't transmit but there's there's no antenna chosen. Obviously we can always make this um, into a function that always one antenna will be chosen maybe antenna one and I was also thinking of actually making this a lot more annoying by uh, <laughs> incorporating some sort of a uh, uh, buzzer or speaker into the tuner to make sure that if you have no antenna chosen or for that matter no radio chosen uh, the tuner will become really annoying until you choose one and then it also has uh, you know logic if we have all of these let's say antennas chosen by default it will take the leftmost one so you can see here even though all four buttons are chosen antenna one is chosen obviously if we click off one then it goes to two to three and then to four so this thing does have uh, logic built into it as well uh, to prevent you know mishaps from either you having two antennas chosen or no antenna chosen and the same thing is actually for the radio this uh, you know I think it's a pretty nice feature because it allows you to have flexibility um, in your shack you can connect and, and because the uh, uh, the boxes are also uh, separate uh, allows you to connect uh, up to four different radios and up to four different antennas and be uh, uh, capable of very easily controlling that right through the front of the tuner and then if we move over to the right here again you will see that there's three um, uh, three encoders very very easy to move and uh, for the transmitter capacitor for the antenna capacitor as well as for the inductor and as you can see as you move these uh, we are moving the uh, different values on the capacitor and the inductor okay so that's a little bit on the front panel of the tuner uh, let me actually now try to zoom in a little bit more on our uh, interface uh, our java interface here that displays a lot of the uh, parameters we'll go over some of these things here and then again in uh, other videos to follow uh, we'll actually do the same but uh, while the tuner is operating so you can see it in action you can see how fast it tunes and you can also see uh, how we can achieve pretty much good SWRs. Okay, so let me try to zoom in here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I, th I think you can see uh, most of the parameters there on the video, so we can continue. Okay, so uh, again, these are just uh, bar graphs that display uh, the position of capacitors. Uh, really what these numbers indicate, the way that I have normalized them, is they indicate degrees. Uh, and if we actually turn the knob here all the way you'll see that it goes up to about uh, 90 degrees which basically uh, means that our capacitor is fully meshed and if we go beyond that you see the numbers decrease because again the capacitor is getting unmeshed okay obviously when we when we are tuning what we want to achieve is maximum capacitance and minimum inductance uh, that's how we achieve a very efficient uh, but also very uh, good uh, uh, low to our match with very few losses and this is again labeled as the transceiver capacitor the antenna capacitor and inductor this is a T network uh, antenna tuner again you can read more on the article about that and the differences between different networks uh, right above here you'll actually also see two smaller bar graphs that are uh, actually reading 
uh, voltages. And these are basically voltage readings directly off my 8307 uh, uh, log amps um, that uh, uh, you know allow me to get a snapshot directly of what the voltage is. Obviously, this voltage, as we as we've talked, uh, translates into a um, uh, millivolts per dB. So according to this voltage, we can then actually use calculations to obtain power. And you can see down here, I have a, a label for forward power, reverse power. Uh, actually, it's reading in dBm right now. And because there is no transmission, you can see it's reading minus 8 dBm, uh, which is a pretty low noise floor. We can actually improve upon this noise floor by uh, further shielding, you know, etc. But, you know, this is good enough for me. I haven't really had a need to go fine tune it and achieve a lower noise floor. Uh, I'm sure you're going to have other more accurate uh, external uh, power uh, meters, but uh, you also be amazed how accurate this power meter is um, for the 8307s. And then all the way here to, to the right, we have our SWR indicator. We also have indicators for frequency and band. Uh, as we've talked about, our TZ samples the transmitting frequency, and we're able to take a look at our frequency in the band. There's, there's a clock there in the middle, and according to the frequency and band, uh, the tuner will then uh, either uh, go into memory mode that will pre-determine uh, the position of all of the uh, variable components and go there to achieve a low SWR. If uh, the SWR is not that low, it will then go in back into a tuning mode to achieve the lowest possible and then automatically again save, uh, save those values. This is a touch screen. Okay, so right in the front here, you can see right now the tuner is in direct mode. But if I uh, go on ahead and touch the tune button, you can see it flips over. Uh, I'm sure you can't hear it, but there's a relay that the flips and now put it into tune mode. And this is how we can uh, control whether or not we want to be in direct mode and have manual control of the tuner or be in fully tune mode to let the tuner automatically tune. Have another thing here for resetting my Arduino do it uh, have uh, uh, you know if you ever have a, a need to reset the microcontroller for whatever reason I have a button here and then you know funny thing on the upper uh, right here I have a, a little icon of a Raspberry Pi if I actually go on ahead and touch that it, it basically shuts down my Raspberry Pi now again the Raspberry Pi is being used pretty much as a display uh, device so even though the Pi might be shut down the tuner still continues to function and operate but you know I want to shut the Pi down in a proper manner so as to not call any file corruption so I have this little button here uh, and then I can go on ahead and turn off the tuner you can you know this could be easily automated by turning off the tuner and having some sort of a timer in there it would complicate the design I find this to be very very straightforward obviously I'll leave it up to you to uh, uh, hopefully you're going to choose to build this thing and you can add those additional features. And then here's a little window on the status, right? We have, as I described, our antenna and transceiver selections. And then you can see here that our tuner mode is indirect. Uh, and then if we go over again to tune, the tuner mode uh, turns to tune. Just as a little indicator, uh, you know, we can ha also have an alert function. Again, if we have not chosen anything and all kinds of little things that you can display here uh, that can be added. Okay. So pretty, pretty uh, uh, cool uh, in terms of, you know, really happy in the way that this whole thing came together. Uh, let me zoom out here a little bit uh, so we can take a look at the, at the whole tuner again. And in subsequent sections, what we're going to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, hook up the tuner to a couple of dummy loads with different uh, resistances. So you can see how quickly it tunes once it finds that uh, frequency in its lockup table. And also you can see how the tuning procedure uh, let's say starts uh, if a good match cannot be found. And, you know, we'll also see the tuner in action with, with uh, uh, power being indicated, reverse forward, uh, dBs, and then also SWRs. Okay, so um, that's it for this uh, video. Thank you for watching. Just wanted to provide a quick overview uh, of the tuner and uh, more videos to follow with a lot more detail. Uh, again, on its operation, but then we'll also be looking inside the tuner uh, to see some of the components and to see what makes it tick. Thank you for watching.